So the big question is this, how are marketers like us who don't cut corners and rely on hype-filled, black hat, scammy marketing, who are always focused on providing value first and over delivering for our customers with every single purchase they make, how do we market our products and services in a way that allows us to get our message out into the world, dominate the competition, and create a lifestyle of freedom and abundance without sacrificing sales and profit? That's the riddle, and on this show, you'll find the answer. Hey, my name's Misha Wilson, and welcome to Marketing with Misha. What is going on, everyone? Misha Wilson here, coming at you from my car here in the beautiful island of Maui, Hawaii. Let me know what your name is and where you're coming in from for another episode today here of Marketing with Misha. And uh, this little mini series where I'm sharing with you some of my biggest screw ups, stuff I've done wrong, stuff I could have avoided to uh, you know avoid wasting a lot of money. And uh, then also a few lessons that if I would have kind of learned, embraced, and applied earlier in my journey would have allowed me to make a lot more money much more quickly. So let me know what your name is and where you're coming in from. Give me a quick yes as you hop on and uh, pay attention to this entire Facebook Live. And as always, if you guys get value, be sure to go ahead and share this Facebook Live. If I get the correct number of shares to actual views, I'll be sure to do more Facebook Lives just like this one. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in to today's topic. And it's actually kind of funny. I had this written down. So before I did this little series of lives, I spent some time and I wrote down, you know, four or five different lessons that I'd go ahead and share with you. And uh, I had this written down already as one of the lessons. And I was going to share it probably a little bit later on in the week, a few days from now. But uh a few things came up, a few comments were made, and it really kind of again invoked me creating it and doing it a little bit sooner and going ahead and doing it today. So yesterday's Facebook Live, quick story, I just, I did it for my dad's house. I like working, I like kind of moving around, sometimes at my, my place, my girlfriend's place, my dad's place. You know, one of the things that I like most about having an online business is the fact that I have total freedom to work from wherever I want, whenever I want, as long as I have a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. And I fully do take advantage of that, right? And uh, another thing that I try to do in my marketing is look, I try to keep it real. Today I'm wearing a V-neck shirt, I'm not gonna go and put on a suit to uh, you know, try to appear like something I'm not. Yesterday, I wasn't wearing a shirt. Lots of times I don't wear a shirt when I work. I'm not gonna go put on a shirt just to do a video so I can look like someone that I'm not, so I can portray an image that isn't really authentically me. Honestly, there's so many marketers out there where you, know, you meet them in person and they're like one thing and you see a Facebook Live and they're totally fucking different. And the honest truth is, as a person, as an individual, for me, it drives me nuts when other people do that, and I always try to not do it. So look, if I'm you know, hanging out in my car in a V-neck shirt and camouflage board shorts, that's what you're gonna get. And if you don't like it, you don't need to tune in, you don't need to watch, you don't need to continue to pay attention. But once again, if you do, cool, I'll try to provide value, right? But why am I telling you any of this? So essentially yesterday I did that Facebook Live from my dad's house. I wasn't wearing a shirt, I was just kinda hanging out. And you all get how this ties into the actual lesson and why it's relevant for you in just a minute. But I did the Facebook Live for my dad's house. Give me some comments, likes, hearts, and shares. If you guys got value out of yesterday's Facebook Live, leave me a quick hashtag value, and be sure to go back to watch that Facebook Live. If you missed it, I'll link out in the email that sent you to this one somewhere. But uh, essentially, you know, I was shirtless. I just kind of said, hey, let's do a quick Facebook Live, turn on the camera, started talking, shared a lesson that honestly, you know, if you take seriously, will save you tens upon on tens upon tens of thousands of dollars, if not more. And, uh, you know, a lesson that cost me $250,000 worth of cash flow in our business. And so essentially something that most marketers won't share, all right? Most marketers always wanna look perfect. Most marketers always wanna appear untouchable. Most marketers always wanna put themselves up on the pedestal nonstop. And I'm just here kind of sharing from the heart right? And I wake up today and I look at my uh, YouTube comments. I like to kind of, you know, tune in and make sure there aren't any crazy comments out there, whatever there may be. And I look at my YouTube comments and there's a lady saying essentially, 
You know, I understand that this guy works from home. I understand that he's fit. But why on earth do you have to do Facebook Lives with your shirt off? It's so unprofessional. And uh, there was another guy, and I don't even know how my house or my dad's house was dirty, honestly. I looked back on the video. But there was another guy who said, you know, cool message, but you might want to consider cleaning up before you do a Facebook Live. And uh, got it. It just it blows my mind, A. And I'll get to the lesson here in a minute. It blows my mind, A, because holy shit, I'm sharing with you a lesson that cost me $250,000 worth of cash flow for my business, and you're more concerned about the fact that I'm not wearing a shirt, or you're more concerned about something being out of place in the background. So firstly, the level of thinking and the level of just, you know, I'm, the level of thinking and the level of lack of thinking, I should say, is just out of this world crazy, right? But then secondly, you know, for me, from my perspective, when I was first getting started, that's something that would have, you know, knocked me off my game. That's something that would have made me feel really bad. That's something that would have probably stopped me from doing any more videos just like that one in the future. That's something that would have forced me and pushed me to wear a shirt intentionally, even if I'm not wearing a shirt the next time I do a Facebook Live. And I would have felt kind of bad, right? And that leads me to the lesson here today. Look, no matter what you're doing, I think Steve Jobs has a quote, and uh, it goes something along the lines of, no matter how hard you try, you're only gonna make some of the people happy some of the time, right? And the truth is, look, if you don't have haters, if you don't have people that aren't into you, if you don't have people that don't like you, love you, you know, get behind what you're actually doing, and if you don't have people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum, who hate you, can't stand you, don't wanna tune into you, you know, you drive them nuts for one reason or another, you're actually not marketing effectively, all right? And that leads me to the main lesson, which is if you have haters, if you have people who can't stand you, if you have people that don't wanna hear from you, if you have people where you do a Facebook Live and they immediately tune out, you're actually doing something really powerful and you're doing and running your business exactly the way that you should be, all right? So I know that can be one of those things where getting to a point where you're okay with accepting that people don't like you, you have to overcome internal stuff. Uh, being okay with people not liking you, you have to be at a certain point yourself to be able to do that but if we look at a few of, I mean, God, I'm not into politics. The whole fucking thing's a total scam to me from my perspective. But, uh, you know, if you look at someone like Donald Trump, right? I'm not taking sides one way or another here. But if you just look at the guy, like half the people love him, half the people hate him, but he has all of the attention because he's always talked about. If we take it, you know, into the sports world and look at someone like Conor McGregor, I mean, I love Conor McGregor, right? My friends hate Conor McGregor, a couple of my friends, but no matter what, everyone talks about Conor McGregor. And when you have that element, you are what you call polarizing, all right? When you are polarizing, what tends to happen naturally is that, and in the polarization, you'll have a large body of people that love you and a large body of people that hate you. What happens when you have that large body with contrast between love and hate, love and hate, love and hate, what naturally happens is conversation. What naturally happens is arguments. What naturally happens is attention. What naturally happens in you being polarizing is you getting attention through all the various, once again, conversations, arguments, everything that's going on, look at Donald Trump's election, right? Even if people were there talking crap about him, he was still on, you know, every single television station throughout the entire period of time leading up to the election, giving him a bigger audience to be able to go ahead and influence more people, right? And again, that gave him the ability to get just, you know, just under 50% of the actual total votes, but it was because he was okay with being hated. Now look, whether you love him, whether you hate him, you know, get over that just for a minute and look at it from a marketing lesson. Look at the fact that again, he got voted into White House, the White House with zero credentials, zero, you know, experience in politics, zero, you know, 
proof that he was competent to do the job that the American people voted him him in for, and it was largely based on the fact that he was polarizing. All right, another example, and give me a quick two in the comments box below if you guys are getting value. Give me a two and some comments, likes, hearts, and shares. I hope and hope I'm coming through clear here. My camera is kind of doing something a little bit funky coming in and out, but I hope and I hope I'm coming through clear. And I hope you guys understand the value of truly ha having haters. But another perfect example would be LeBron James, right? There's the LeBron James, Michael Jordan debate. Who's the greatest? Who's the GOAT? Who's the best that ever lived? And there's that conversation. And if you ask a Michael Jordan fan or a Kobe Bryant fan what they think of LeBron James, 99% of them, it is not a you know, LeBron's pretty good. He's a great athlete. I just happen to think Jordan's better. It is never that, all right? It is LeBron sucks. LeBron isn't clutch. LeBron has never done anything without having someone get him over the finish line. LeBron is a drama queen. He's a terrible leader. LeBron has never, you know, X, Y, Z. And there's nonstop hate towards LeBron, all right? We're a LeBron lover. I love LeBron. You know, we look at, again, all the reasons why we believe he's one of, if not the best of all time, right? And because of that conversation, because of that polarization, because of that line in the sand where, look, I don't want people thinking Misha's kind of cool. I want people thinking Misha's really cool. And I don't want people thinking Misha, you know, he's kind of not cool. I want people thinking, I can't stand Misha. That's my goal in my marketing. I want people who can't stand me, and then I want people who really love me because the truth of the matter is that, look, when you're going to sell a program, when you're going to sell a coaching program, something like that, where there's a little bit more of an investment, where there's, you know, someone has to really believe in you and get behind you to go ahead and invest, people are not going to invest in the person that they kind of think is a little bit cool. They're not gonna invest in the person that they kind of feel knows his stuff just a little bit. They're going to invest in the person who they absolutely love, who they love to get behind, and who they love to follow. And guess what? The only way to have those people in your world, the only way to actually have those people exist is to also have people on the equal and opposite side of the spectrum who absolutely despise you, hate you, do not want to tune into you, and uh, again, you know, just don't like you as a whole. So the lesson for the day here, and you may quick three in the comments box below, some comments, likes, hearts, and shares, if you guys are getting value, I sure do hope this is coming through clearly. Let me know it's clear in the comments box below if it is, but the lesson for today is look, the sooner that you can embrace the idea of hating, having haters, the fewer you can embrace the idea of it being okay with not everyone liking you, the sooner you can embrace the idea of haters actually being a good thing. And the more haters you have, the better off you are. The sooner you can embrace that, adopt that philosophy, and live by that philosophy, the better you off you are long-term, the more powerful of a business you're gonna have, the more influence you're gonna have, the stronger you know, of a bond you're gonna have with your audience, and uh, you'll have more sales, see more profit, be able to grow your business that much faster as a result. So that's my message for you here today. Give me some comments, likes, hearts, and shares if you guys got value out of today's episode, of course, of Marketing with Misha. I appreciate each and every single one of you. And until next time, over and out.